Randy is well is a well-known conference speaker and a senior technical leader with a background working in many large, sometimes famous Silicon Valley companies, including Google, WeWork, eBay, uh, uh, and many others. Randy currently works as VP of Engineering and Chief Architect at eBay. My first memory of Randy was seeing him uh, deliver a keynote uh, at QCon London on the topic of delivering great software at kind of web monster scale. Uh, but since then, we've met several times and I've always found Randy to be a delightful company and always interesting to talk to. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome Randy Shep to the engineering room. Great. Oh, thanks, Dave. Uh, wow, what a great introduction and uh, so excited to be with you. Um, really a big admirer, of, big admirer of your channel as we were chatting beforehand. I've watched every episode uh, and just loving it, loving every one of it. So for those of you that are not yet subscribers, hit subscribe and like, because uh, uh, this is a great, a great channel to uh, be a part of. Great. Thank you very much. So, so you, you've, you spent a lot of your career working, as far as I can see, in big complex web companies. So I'm interested in exploring your views on what software development looks like when nearly everything that you do is at scale and under the stress of millions of users. But I also don't want to jump in with both feet into the middle of that conversation. Um, so I, I thought an interesting place to start was I, I saw one of your talks where you described uh, the different needs of architecture and design at different points in the life cycle of a product. Um, and in it, as a si kind of as a side remark, you said that you thought that in startup mode, you think that a monolith is best. While I agree with that, completely, <laughs> I think that it might surprise some people. So could you explain why you think that's the case? Yeah, oh, I 100% agree with that. And I love starting small because like every place that's big was once small. Uh, and I'm sure we'll talk about all the places that are big, some of which I've gotten a chance to work, with, work at, most of which I haven't, uh, all evolved from something small. So uh, every place evolved from a monolith. So yeah, so when you're, the way I like to think about it is there's sort of, uh, I change the phrasing every so often, but like there's a startup mode where like I have an idea <laughs> and I'm looking for a, uh, looking for a business model, trying to find product market fit. And there what you're trying to do is iterate really fast. So what you're not interested in is scale because uh, your team is small and you don't even really know what the pro like the bounds of your problem. You don't have your to think to say domain driven design. You haven't like been able to bound any of your context, if that makes sense. So um, so 100 percent start with a monolith. Uh, that's because you haven't, by by starting with a monolith, you haven't pre-decided <laughs> the subcomponents of your of your system, right? Like you haven't already, because you don't necessarily know uh, your system to start with. Um, so I recommend in the 95, 99% case, uh, people that are just starting out with, with a project or just starting out with an entire company um, that you 100% start with a monolith. And that is true of every of one of the big companies, you know, eBay started as a monolith. So did Netflix. So did Twitter. Uh, you know, every place that you can think of, wow, they're really web scale. They all started uh, as a small monolith. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's that period of kind of exploring the problem. I, I I'm increasingly, uh, of the view that working kind of defensively in terms of design and architecture so that we are give ourselves the freedom to find out where our decisions are wrong and and to you know, and to change them later is important but also as as you point out that need to in the early days when you really got no clue is to be able to iterate really quickly so that you can learn fast really yeah the, the easiest place to the easiest way to learn quickly is like everything's in a single repo uh i can do everything with refactoring tools with my entire yeah <laughs> you know with my entire system essentially because it's just one thing um and uh it's, it's super easy the other thing is you do not have any of the problems of that you know, services or microservices or event-driven architectures solve. Like all those things, like I'm huge fans of all those things and where I am now and I will get there, <laughs> like we absolutely need microservices and event-driven architecture and all yeah. those fancy techniques. Uh, we couldn't be large without them, but the problems that those things solve, you don't have when you're a tiny startup iterating fast, trying to find product market fit and just meeting the needs of your, of your near-term customers. Um, the other obvious thing is like, 
performance, right? So like all calls are local. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't, you don't introduce any network inside there. Uh, it's easy to roll out and roll back because there's one, you know, uh, unit, um, the artifact. Um, so yeah, super, you know, 100% the right thing to do. And honestly, I mean, we started with the startup, but like, I think 90% of the uh, uh, software on the uh, on the planet really should be done in a, in a monolith. And it's the exceptional, uh, once you're in what I like to call the growth phase or the scaling yeah. phase, uh, then you start to see the problems with the monolith, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And then this, then you can start to, you know, leverage into the other architectural solutions uh, for those. Um, and then going from there, but, you know, it's an S curve and like only when you're, but the, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the concave down part of the S, do you start to uh, really need to move from a monolith to something like microservices? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I spent I, I spent some time last week with, uh, with, with our mutual friend, Martin Thompson, um, and we were in a pub in, in Belfast, uh, bemoaning the fact that nearly all projects these days seem to start with Kubernetes and separate repos for everything. And we're going, <laughs> it's not a good place to start. <laughs> not a good place to start. Uh, spoiler alert, eBay is exactly Kubernetes with tons of repos, but... <laughs> uh, but uh, and you're not starting. <laughs> we're not starting, yeah. we got 27 years behind us and 4,000 engineers. So, yeah, yeah no, 100%. You know, it's great. I love to read like, well, what does Google do? What, you know, what does Facebook do? Uh, what, do you, what do Baidu and Tencent and, uh, you know, ByteDance do? Uh, and that's interesting, but it's not, it's a very small percentage <laughs> of the industry that has, you know, the, the kind of hyperscale problems. And so, yeah. So, so, that, so, so, if if you'll forgive me being kind of um, philosophical and esoteric for a minute, so, so that 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 leads me to be thinking in terms of you know, I'll be interested in your views on architecture, what you think architecture is, and what it gives us. You know, if it's if it's not just about looking at eBay or Google and saying, oh, we'll do what they're doing because that make, that helps. What is it then? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's one of those like. Uh, um, yeah, like, you know, it when you see it, uh, I mean, <laughs> we've done a couple of interviews where, you know, like with, uh, with Simon Brown and others where we tried to explore the topic of what is architecture. And I don't know, I have much to add to that. I mean, there's architecture is the hard decisions. Um, I like to think of it as that it's like, I mean, my mental model is it's the skeleton, uh, you know, of the overall system within which we, you know, uh, play stuff. Um, and, um, yeah. So, but, but what it's for, it's a, I, my mind is saying tool, but there's, I'm sure a better word. Like it's just a means to an end. Like there's nothing magical about the architecture. There's no, yeah. I mean, this is obvious. There's no one right architecture. There are architectures that are good and not good at, you know, startup scale, growth scale, <laughs> hyper growth, you know, hyper scale. Um, uh, but you know, there's no, there's no one ar right architecture for everything. And, um, and so uh, I, I would just suggest that it's whatever makes your job easier doing your work. And mm -hmm. the one thing that I would add to the discussions I've been listening to is over time, your architecture is likely to change. If you should be so lucky as to like grow into the growth scale, growth phase and, you know, hyperscale phase, you absolutely are going to change your architecture in some cases, five different times. Like that's what we did at eBay. I can tell you that trajectory. Um, so it's totally legitimate to do that. Um, but what, what is true at every scale is you are going to be changing your software. So what makes it easy to change your software? <laughs>